Hey, welcome back. It's Cedric here, and I'm really excited for you to join me today as we set up and use the Podman AI Lab, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to generative AI for developers. Now, I think it's safe to say that the AI world can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Where do you get started? How do you learn to build these AI-enabled applications, and how do you run these things? And what I really love about Podman AI Lab is it provides a simple way to work with a curated selection of models to build really cool applications and even provide some recipes to get started with use cases like chatbots, summarizers, and use techniques such as RAG to work with your personal or organizational data, all from your local desktop environment. Okay, so let's get started. And we're going to begin by installing Podman Desktop and the Podman AI Lab extension to help get set up with your development environment for generative AI. And this is going to include some of these really cool features such as the AI recipes. So a collection of different use cases so that if you have no experience with AI development whatsoever, you can get started with chatbots, summarizers, speech to text, and much, much more. Uh, and also it gives you the source code to get started from, which is super cool. And then we're going to dive into the model catalog. So a variety of different models that you can use that are all open source, or you can import your own. And then we're going to take a look at model serving. So how can you actually integrate these AI models into your applications that you might already have? And we're going to take a look at a really cool example today with the model serving. So we're going to serve a local large language model from our machine. And we're going to have VS Code open on the other side where we're developing an application for an insurance organization uh, so they can add a chatbot to their website. So this is going to be really cool. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and start off by downloading Podman Desktop. If you haven't heard of it before, it's a really awesome interface for working with containers container images, your Kubernetes clusters. Essentially, it's a powerhouse if you're working for cloud-native applications. I'm going to go ahead and download the Mac version, but what's so cool about it is that it's open source, so you can contribute to it, and there's versions for Linux and Windows as well. So let's go ahead and hop over. So welcome to Podman Desktop. Here's the dashboard after I've just installed it, and you can see that Podman is set up and running here, but I could also use Docker as a container engine, or I could use Lima as well in order to build container images for my applications or pull them down and then be able to run them here, uh, but also be able to create pods from them as well. So one or more containers. And speaking of Kubernetes, I can view my different Kubernetes environments, my deployments, my services, all from this one user interface. So it's really, really cool if you're working to deploy your applications onto Kubernetes as well. But let's head over to the extensions page because we're here to test out different AI models and I can do so with the Podman AI Lab. So I just installed it, it's that easy. And from here, we've got this amazing interface to work with different AI recipes for use cases, for the catalog of models, for the services, and we're gonna dive into that all right now. So let's get started with these recipes. And what these really do is allow you to get started with AI in a variety of different ways. So whether it's a chatbot that you wanna to add to your website or some type of code generation from a model or say RAG that we'll take a look at today, you can start using these predefined and starter templates for working with different AI use cases. For example, the RAG chat application. Let me explain how it works though. So this is what's known as a RAG architecture. And by default, if we're the user and we're trying to talk to our LLM, say for example, with a UI like ChatGPT, well, it doesn't have information about us or our context or our information to give the best responses back. And so by using a RAG architecture, we're actually using a vector database here in the Podman AI Lab example, it's Chroma DB, to essentially store some documents that we're going to upload via the web UI that you're going to see here in a second to be parsed in so that every time I ask for, say, the biography of Cedric Clyburn, well, it's going to have that vectorized in these different embeddings to pull down and to add into my prompt so that I get the right response back with that additional information. So that's RAG. Let's go ahead and see it in action. So let's go ahead and kick this thing off. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is click the start button. And you're going to notice that I have a local clone of the upstream repository here that has all of these different recipe examples. And so that's been cloned locally. But what I'll do is I'll pick a model that I want to use. For example, the Granite 7 billion parameter model. And we'll dive into how you can do that later. But I'll go ahead and start this. And you'll see a couple different steps are kicking off. So we've got that repository locally with the source code. But what we're going to do is we're going to use that granite 7 billion parameter model we're going to start an inference server we're going to build two different applications so we've got we've got this inference app for so that we can upload documents and we can chat with the model that's being used uh and just like that we have this ai app running locally on our machine so i'll go ahead and check this out here in my browser and we'll test it out make sure that everything is working as it should be 
And just like this, we've got the UI up and ready. And now I'm sure you're used to chatting with simple applications like this, where we can ask a general purpose model a question. So for example, we're asking about Dan Walsh's favorite sports team. And the model that I have served from Podman AI Lab, well, it's not able to tell me because it doesn't have information about this specific niche, about this specific domain, or about our organization in general, for example. But if I provide that information, as I just did with this text file, saying that Boston is, uh, Dan, sorry, is a huge Boston Celtics fan, well, now it's going to convert that into embeddings and store that in the vector database container that we have running. So that if I ask that same question again, to this same general purpose model that hasn't been fine-tuned or trained, it's going to have the relevant information in the context of the prompt to hopefully give us back the right answer that he's a huge Boston Celtics fan. So it says that he's a senior distinguished engineer, but, oh, it says he's a huge Boston Celtics fan as well. So I hope you can see how this can apply to a variety of different situations where we want the model to respond back with the right output and we have information to provide that can help with that process as well. And back here in Podman Desktop, as I said before, we have a container for the front end, but also the inference server and the vector database that was running. I can see that here in the pods. Uh, so for my local machine here, we can see that we have this pod here with the three different containers so I can view the output and the logs uh, of everything that's going on behind the scenes. But let's say I wanna make a change to this application that I have running. Well, I can just open it in my favorite IDE to actually understand what's happening in the background here, the different dependencies that we have, and I can start to make changes and build upon this starter application to add in specific features that I would like to see. And so this is all done from the code that's provided with the recipe. I can see the container file, and I've got some other different rele relevant files that I can use for deploying onto a variety of different environments. So I think that's so cool with these recipes, but this brings us to the model catalog because as I said before, we were using that pre-downloaded model, that Granite 7 billion parameter open source model. But as you notice, there's a lot of different models here and they're all Apache 2.0 licensed. So you can use them in a variety of different ways. To download them, I can just hit the download button or I can import them from GGUF or bin format from a place like Hugging Face where there's more open source models to use. Um, now that I have these here, I can take a look at some more information I can open up the actual website where uh, this model might be located to get more information, for example, Hugging Face. But what's so important is that I don't have to sort through the almost a million different models that are here on Hugging Face. I have an easy place to uh, essentially sort through and use different models that are all Apache 2.0 licensed. But now that we have these models downloaded, let's go ahead and serve it so that applications can use it. Now I've got this Mistral 7B. This is a very popular model in the open source community. And I'll go ahead and set it to port 8000. So I'm creating this service, which essentially creates an inference server so that other applications can use it. Now this means uh, I could make a crawl request to it locally, or I could use any uh, language of my choice to start developing and using this LLM in my application. For example, if we're a Java developer, well, we have all of the starter code here to integrate this model into the application that we're working on. I also wanna show you here at this point that we've got information about the inferencing, which is on my GPU here on my MacBook, but also the Swagger documentation. So I can check out the different endpoints of this API. And I think this is really cool for applications that you wanna add AI capabilities to. So for example, we're actually gonna see one today, which is a Java application. I'll show you this on GitHub. This is the Parasol Insurance. So it's a fake organization that essentially has a chatbot that helps insurance agents summarize claims and get information faster so they can do their jobs better. And I think this is a perfect use case for AI. So I've gone ahead and I've cloned this locally here. This is a Quarkus application, so it's made for Kubernetes environments, and it's super fast. I've done a Quarkus dev, and I've already got the CLI up and running, and it's being hosted on, let's see, port 8005 on localhost. But at the same time, we're using Langchain for J to simplify the request that we're making to the AI model that's being served from Podman Desktop. So what we all, all the only thing we have to do actually is to set the uh, URL of the model that's being served, which if I show you back on Podman Desktop, we're serving it at port 8000. So just like that, I've got it running and set up in VS Code for the application that I'm running here. 
And we can set the temperature and other parameters, the timeout for model responses, but I'll go ahead and show you this in action. So let's open up the URL. In my browser here, we can see we've got the application running in development mode. I'll go ahead and click on one of the claims. And here we've set up a WebSocket connection to the model that's being served. So if I ask, uh, please summarize claim in natural language, we're going to be able to get a response back from the model that includes some of the context from this uh, claim information that we have here. But just like that, we've already got a response back uh, summarizing some of the information. And this is done with prompt engineering. So I'll show you this here back in VS Code. So using langchain for j for Java applications, we're actually able to set up a system message that passes to the AI model each time we uh, send a message, but also a user message that includes different variables, such as the claims information and the query that we asked from the chatbot itself. So if we go into the logs here, we can actually see that we're asking the model here that we're serving. Uh, we're asking it the question, uh, please summarize the claim, but we're also providing the information from the claim, which is super cool. And we're getting our response back in tokens. So we can see this all in action as we get the responses back from our AI model. We can ask another question, for example, what's the contact info? And get another type of similar uh, focused response back from the model that's being served. And I think this is just such a cool way to start integrating AI into our applications to go through large amounts of data that would take hours or even longer if we were to do it manually, but now we can delegate that task to an AI model to be able to do information and extraction just like we've seen here in the message window. So let's head back to Podman Desktop. Now the AI lab has other features that I won't dive in too much to today, but there's a playground environment that I could set up. So uh, I'll give it a name and we can choose a model of our liking, for example, that granite model. And just like that, we've got this area that we can test out different prompts and do different prompt engineering as well as test around the temperature or the amount of tokens that we're using. But that essentially is the Podman AI Lab. It's a lot of features uh, and functionality to get you set up really quickly working with AI or integrate AI into your existing applications. So you can use it from Podman Desktop. And I encourage you to go to podman-desktop.io in order to download it, to try it out today, and let us know what you think in the comments below. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.